how fiber changed my life. My name is Drew and I'm the face and
All right, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in to tonight's game. We've got MG Domed versus Cosa Gaming Rampage. I'm Charles Elroy. I'm going to be bringing you the show tonight. These two teams are about ready to get into the uh, pro draft, and we'll bring that to you here in just a moment. Stay tuned. All right, and we are going to go ahead and get into the draft. Thank you again for tuning in. We've got Kosa Gaming Team Rampage versus MG Domed. Uh, as we go through this, let me know what your thoughts are on the draft and who you think is going to win. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but let's get into it. We've got an Evelyn band coming out here, followed by a Jinx and a Tom Kench coming from the side of Kosa. With his rework, I'm sure they just don't want to see that in there, and I love the pick. Also, Jinx, great scale, great carry. 
good thing we're taking her out of match. I also imagine a lot of these are target bands for some of the champions uh, that these folks play on the regular as well, which is also nice. We benched the Kench. <laughs> you should be casting. Maybe not me. I, you got better better rhymes than I do. Viego, also super strong right now, going to be going ahead and taking out of this game the final band coming through for MG Domed here. And they're going to take it down to the wire. We're going to see Sendra Hubbard. Silas, Silas Ban. I like Silas Ban. He's very strong with his Everfrost. It secures the Abduct Abscond and he gets his Kingslayer on there. He's super hard to trade within lane. He's able to roam and match a lot of the uh, the poke of the um, range champions. So I, I like the pick. Or the ban, rather. Dr. Mundo. Broken AF in lane right now. Very strong. Can take over a game. Can start 1v9. He does not worry about how low his health is. And he will just keep charging on. I love the B1 pick for Dr. Mundo. R1 coming up here in just a second for the side of MG Domed. That was almost too late, but we're going to see Tristana locked in. I like the Tristana pick. Great at pushing waves, great at engaging, also great at disengaging or getting away if she needs to. Provides herself with a little bit of peel and a little bit of mobility. Um, also can be flexed, right? She can be thrown into the mid lane. She can be thrown into the ABC role. So I like that they're not revealing too much with the Tristana pick here. And the Nautilus. I like Nautilus. Offers a lot of engage, offers a lot of peel. Um, great at absorbing some of that damage in the early game and also in the team fights. So I think Nautilus is a very solid pick. Um, I'm interested to see how MG Dome does the rest of the draft and how uh, CGR does the rest of the draft. Just what they're showing right now because I see that... That's a Ziggs pick. That could be flexed mid or bot. So again, not too much revealed there. Um... I love the Ziggs though, and he's a great he's a great match for the Tristana as well if he does end up going bot side. He also likes to push in waves. He's great at taking towers and turrets like the uh, Tristana is. Um, so really good pick there, and I love the Trundle. Trundle's been really strong lately. Just taking notes. Um, Trundle's been very strong lately. Great engage, disengage with the pillar. His W makes it so that he is just a threat on there, and his R in a team fight can just really help him start to do some damage in the fights. Um, the last pick coming through for MG Dome tier, it's going to be Akali. I know some orgs that I uh, do casting for have asked, have uh, removed Akali entirely from play because of the rework that they gave her. So I'm very uh, interested to see how she plays out So I haven't because I haven't got to see it here in a while. So I like what we're seeing, seeing here so far. Again, Akali could go top, could go mid. Tristana could go mid, could go ADC. Ziggs could go mid, could go ADC. Um, so I like what we're seeing here. There's a lot of options, nothing too much revealed. And we've got a variety of uh, what roles have been picked and everything like that. So I love what we're seeing. We're going to see a Thresh ban come out of the side of MG Domed. And we're going to see a Mordekaiser ban. Mordekaiser ult, huge, contains a team fight in an instant. Um, so definitely want to get him out of there. And also Thresh, super good. If the player is really good with Thresh at enabling fights, disenabling fights, catching people. Um, the Lantern's huge. And we've got some quick bans coming in here now. Lucian is going to get banned, and we're going to see the Gangplank banned. And we'll get into these final picks. R4 up on the list first. Covering the cled. And they're going to lock in the cled. I like it. Cled, really good. Really hard to trade within lane, I think. Um, especially if you're not paying attention to when he's going to hop back on his, uh, his mount. That's kind of frustrating sometimes. But I like the cled pick. Um, Mundo, I, I still think he's going to have a really good time in lane, though, because he's just so strong. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong for the sake of MG Dome. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Ezreal, very strong right now with the Divine Sunderer build. 
Um, we're going to see him get locked in here, and the final pick going to come through. It'll very likely be a support since we see Ziggs is probably going to go mid. Mundo top, Trundle jungle. Let's see what they pick. When it comes to Ezreal, I like to pair something that offers, yes. Offers some peel, offers some engage. The arcane shift allows him to be mobile and get out of fights that he needs to. Um, but at the same time, you want somebody that can provide some knockup, can provide some charm, and things like that. So I love the Rakan pick there. Very mobile. And Rakan's also really good at roaming and everything. So I want to see him go up and help get the bed in um, some kills or help the jungler with securing scuttle and things like that. I want to see him have an influence on the map. And the Lilia locked in. I haven't seen Lilia played in a minute. I love Lilia jungle. Um, I think she's really strong. I think her late game is incredible, especially uh, the way that her passive burns for health. If you throw something like Leandri's uh, Demonic Embrace and a Oblivion Orb, she will just melt through people. So I love what I'm seeing coming out of the side of both of these teams. It's going to make for a very interesting match. Um, in the uh, comments or in the chat, let me know. Who do you think won the uh, the draft? Do you think it's Kosa Gaming Rampage with Dr. Mundo, Ziggs, Trundle, Ezreal, and Rakan? Or do you think it's MG Domed with Tristana, Nautilus, Akali, Kled, and Lilia? Uh, again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the chat or the comments. And if you're on the teams, you can still chat or comment too. I don't mind. That just makes it more interesting and a little bit fun. Um, Looking at the matchup and everything, though, I think this is going to be a very, very fun match. Uh, Akali into Ziggs will be interesting to see, especially with the Akali rework here coming out recently. Um, I think that the Mundo into the Kled is going to be fun. I think that Mundo is going to just take over a little bit later. Um, and then I also really like the jungle matchup. I think that Lilia and Trundle are going to... If you're the Lilia, you want to avoid the Trundle early game. But in those team fights, I think that the Lily is going to be really influential in terms of making sure that things just get crushed. Um, she'll be huge in the team fights with her ball, with her R to set up some good ganks and things of like that. And H1, she hits level six, so I'm excited for that to come through. Um, right now, both teams are in the client draft, getting everything set up for the game, so we will continue talking about it right now. Um, as far as the bot lane goes, Tristana Nautilus into Rakan Ezreal, uh, Rakan Ezreal. The Nautilus, as long as he doesn't get a hook onto the Rakan, and uh, you can try and play out the Arcane Shift, I think you're going to have a little bit better time there trying to get a hold of them. Um, the only problem is if you bring that Rakan in, he can go over, dive in on the Tristana. Ezreal can Arcane Shift, and they can blow her up pretty quickly. She might be able to hop away. Um, but you're just going to have to play around because both these ADCs have some mobility in their kits that allow them to either engage or disengage fights. Um, so they get to pick a little bit more, have a little bit more autonomy in terms of when the fights go down and what's going on. Um, so I'm excited for the bot lane matchup. I think that'll be really fun to watch and really fun to see it play out. Um, I love the, I love the jungle matchup. Like I said, Lily is going to be great in the late game, I think, and especially in the team fights and once she hits level six setting up ganks. Um, I want to see the mid-fight breakdown. I think that'll be where the game's decided, truthfully. If Ziggs can push Rome, drop an R from halfway down the river onto the bot side and help influence the bot side relatively quickly or help come down with um, objectives, I think that's going to be huge. On the flip side, though, if Akali's able to put that pressure on the Ziggs, match it, um, and, and kind of roam herself and have some influence, that'll be huge as well for the side of MG Dome. So I think the mid-game matchup is what we want to see the most of or pay attention to the most of here because I think that'll have the most influence. I expect the top laners pretty much to just shake it out, battle it out, and, uh, you know, CS and do their thing until uh, till we get into the mid to late game. Uh, but I could be wrong. Kled's alt allows him to have a lot of mobility after he hits level 6, and he might want to come down mid uh, or come to a team fight around Scuttle or Herald and try and make something happen there. So very easy for him to influence a game earlier uh, than the Mundo, I think. So again, we want to see how this all works out. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Again, this is Kosa Gaming Rampage vs. MG Domed. We're going to get into the game here shortly. Stay tuned. And thank you very much for tuning in.
All right, and again, thank you very much for tuning into the game. We've got MG Dome versus Kosa Gaming Rampage. Um, looking at everything, we've got Ignite on Nautilus, Exhaust on the Recon. Uh, solo laners, we have the Kled without Flash. He's going to take Ignite, and so is the Akali. So we've got three Ignites coming out from the side of MG Domed, and they are looking to put some kill pressure on the map. Um, and I was wrong. We are going to see a Trundle Top and a Mundo Jungle. I love it when I'm wrong. This is going to be a fun game instead. So now we've got the Mundo Jungle. We've got the Trundle up top into the Kled. Um, this changes some things, so I'm excited to see how this plays out. If you're in the chat, let me know who you think is going to win now that we know that's going to be switching up. We've got Kosa Gaming with Trundle, Mundo, Ziggs, Ezreal, and Rakan. We've got MC Domed with the Tristana, the Nautilus, the Akali, Lilia, and Kled. This is going to be a very fun game. And as the teams get loaded in, again, my thank you, or my thanks to MG Domed and Kosa Gaming Rampage for letting me stream and cast the game. Appreciate you guys. And this game's going to get underway. Everything is uh, coming through right now. Both of the junglers are going to go with the Challenging Smite. As we'll start with that tier, everything else makes a lot of sense, and we're going to see the game get started. We've got several members of the blue team, though, roaming towards the top side. Um, I, I think they're going to look to try and make a play here, obviously. Or perhaps Rakan's dropping some vision back there. Trundle hanging out in the area. Mundo's in the area. It looks like a collie spotted him out. They could be in a tough position. Kled's going to get pinched in here, and it could be a 5v4, a 5v1 real quickly for the Kled. He is going to manage to just escape. Nothing more will come of it. They've got some wards on the top now. Let them know what's going on, and everybody's going to go ahead and run back to where they need to go. Botside was able to get some vision for the side of red deep in the blue jungle, so they are going to also know where he's starting and what's going on there for the Mundo. Got several members of the red team going to go ahead and leash the bot side. Kled starting back a little bit. Just being respectful to make sure he doesn't get dove or anything like that, but he's going to go ahead and run up here shortly. And Kled given a fake leash top, I think. He's going to get spotted on vision and go ahead and run up. So we're going to have a fun time with the side of blue, trying to figure out where the Lilia started exactly. Um, it makes sense that she would start on her blue, but nobody's going to know for sure at this point. There goes the Glad landing his slow, doing some damage. Um, again, I think the top side is just going to be trading out damage here left and right and playing around, but I love the Trundle pick. The PTA procked on Glad there early, so he's going to continue to just try and poke him out. Everything else going pretty well across the map. This Zig's pushing in heavily. He's up about a wave already into the Akali. Uh, everything else relatively equal. The Oh, the Israel gets caught with the Nautilus Q. He gets pulled back in. The E lands on to him. The Rakan has to take some damage, and he is having to get out of there. Tristana about half health. The other two in the bot lane on the side of Kosa are going to find themselves taking a little bit of a beating there. And the Sakali continuing to get poked out. Not the best for her. Meanwhile, Trundle has to go back to lane and come back with only 5 CS. He wasn't able to get anything there besides a refillable pot, which hurts. And he has to burn his TP early. So he's going to be down TP for a couple minutes, and we're going to have to see how the top lane plays out. Lilia going up to the top side. Mundo going up to the top side as well. So we'd expect to see some pressure put on this top, uh, this top lane here in a little bit. Cloud going to drop down. Get a little bit of vision. Going to help secure the uh, 
Rift. Lilia roaming down to mid, trying to make something happen onto the Ziggs, but he'll get out of there. Kled and Mundo having a little fight. Kled remounts, and he's going hard into the Mundo. Some damage coming down. He gets dismounted again. Lilia's in the area. The Ignite comes through. He has to flash away. He may tick and burn, but I think he's going to survive. Yes, he's going to live. Now it's a 2v1. Uh, oh, the PTA is propped. The flash gets over, but she's not able to get away. He's taking a lot of damage. The burn coming through. She flashes, and he's able to lock up the kill. We've got a tri uh, teleport coming in from the Ziggs. Trundle might be able to get 2-0 oh here. He does. He gets two kills because of the engage from Kled and Lily on the top side. Mundo is able to get away, and that's going to be first blood and a second kill going over to the Trundle. Very good job to the Trundle. Way to take advantage of his position, and he is not going to notice that he is down to CS and that he had to teleport back. And uh, he's going to try and push this in and go ahead and get a little bit of a cheater recall here. There's the pillar. There's the PTA proc. He's still going ahead and pushing in here. He's not playing around at all. This, uh, this side of Marital Arts is doing a very good job here. Everything tied up back in the mid lane. The Akali down just two CS. The Lilia down about two camps at this point. The Kled up about a wave or so over the Trundle. We've got the, uh, the three, um... Champions coming down. There's the knockup onto the Tristana, but it misses. He has to flash, get away, dives over to the Ezreal, flies over again. The exhaust comes down onto the uh, onto the Lilia, but she will secure the kill onto the Rakan. Now, there is the Ezreal trying to lock up that kill. He's able to do so, and that's going to be Ezreal falling. This should be enough damage to kill him. Yep, that's going to be a kill going over to Tristana. We are going to see the side of MG Dome trade two more kills over into the bot side. And one kill over on the side of Kosa Raming Rampage. Very well played from the bot lanes. Um, great exhaust coming out, trying to slow down that uh, that Lilia, but unfortunately she is able to do some damage onto the Rakan. He will fall. Ezreal knows he has to trade and will go dive in and gets a good solid kill onto the Lilia, but he will fall. The Tristan is able to follow up and get an E onto him. Uh-oh. Trundle finds himself in the middle of an enemy wave, trading out some damage onto the Kled, and he's not going to be able to secure the kill there. They're both relatively low. Wave crashing. I think they want to try and CS here, but anybody could die at any second here if this isn't played right. Trundle looks like he's got a bit of a health advantage. The pillar comes down and he's able to just Q the Kled and eat him up for dinner. Uh, very well played from the Trundle there to lock up that kill and he now finds himself 3-0 and in the game. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with as this game gets underway. Uh, he came back with a Sheen and uh, that's certainly more than a long sword ruby crystal. He's doing some damage so very good job and very good plays from the Trundle. Quick state of the map. Looks like Tristan is up a little bit of CS right now. Everything's tied in the jungle, and the Kled's up in CS, but very much down in kills, as the Trundle has three kills right now, and it feels like it. Uh, gold is relatively equal across the board since there was a trade in the bot side. Uh, only a couple hundred gold separating these teams. And it looks like Mundo is going to go ahead and opt to start up the Infernal Drake here. Rakan coming in. Lily going to catch him out, though, and we could have a fight breaking out here in the bot side river again. Lilia going to go ahead and hit him with some AoE damage, though. The Nautilus Q will miss, and everybody's going to disengage. Ezreal finds himself a little out of position, and it's a 4v4. The dragon's still getting worked down. Kled going to go ahead and R into the Trundle up top side. And that's going to be Ziggs stealing the Infernal Drake. He's able to lock it down with his R. He's at level 6, and he will burn down the Infernal Drake and get the first drag of the game. Very well played from Ziggs to know when to use that ability. Nicely played from the side of Kosa Gaming. And it looks like Kled is going to have a rough game. He finds himself 0-3 at just 7 minutes in, dying once every 2 minutes or so to this Trundle. This Trundle now sitting at a 4-0. and The R from the Kled did not work. He died while the, other, while the uh, enemy team was locking up the Drake. And guys, this has been a hell of a game so far. About 1,000 gold separating the two teams in favor of Kosa Gaming Rampage. However, that being said, it is anybody's game still. It's too early to let them speak for themselves. One solid gank topside getting a shut down gold onto the Kled could make the difference. Kled coming back with just boots now. He has still not been able to buy very much. Um, not even completing one of his components. He's still going with just uh, a couple smaller items there. So we're going to have to see how this will play out for the Kled. He needs to be able to let that late wave push into him and kind of play back a little bit at this point because he is just getting run over. So there's got to be a better answer there. And 
and some tribush vision coming out of the side of MG domed. Gonna get cleared out by the Rakan. And this Tristana doing a great job of CSing, but everything relatively equal in the bot lane so far. Each ADC with a kill, um, some assists around the area. Um, but most of that CS is on the Tristana, and she continues to push it in. She's going to find herself about a wave or two up as they continue to crash in these waves. Kled finding himself still up in CS, but he needs to play back a lot. As that Trundle is going to try and hit him with the pillar, goes in with the W, trying to knock some damage on. He's not scared of the slow that comes out of the Kled, and he is continuing to play aggressive and keep this Kled off of the CS and the experience from this top wave. He's up about a level onto the Kled now. And that's going to be the uh, the Rift Herald going over to the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage. The Mundo is going to roam up top. And we've also got uh, Rakan. And that's going to be the R from the uh, from the Ziggs. It's going to be Ziggs who's able to lock up that kill, put himself finally on the board with one kill. They're going to take a couple turret shots here from the Trundle, but he's not worried about it. And they're going to drop Rift Herald and try and put some pressure and let this Trundle get out and roam. And put the Kled in a really bad position. He will not be able to step up very far. That's going to be the Rift Herald. Boom. First turret goes over to the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage. And they're going to make sure the second charge gets off as Mundo and Trundle are both going to escort this. Akali coming up into the area to try and play some defense and make sure they don't lose too much off of it. She's going in on the Trundle. Nothing more will come of it. Kled Art comes in. They're going to try and chase this down. There's the Trundle. He's taking some damage. The ignite goes off. He'll burn and he'll fall to the side of Akali. Akali now chasing down on the Mundo. She is pretty powerful at this point. She is continuing to chase down. He tries to slow. Mundo not able to do anything. And he is going to... Fall to the Kled, and that will be 2-0 in favor of MG Domed, as they go ahead and trade two kills back to their side after losing the first turret and letting the charge get off onto the second top lane turret. Very good play, though, to make sure that the Akali is roamed up and they get some shutdown gold. Um, and it went on to the Akali, which is exactly where you want it. She's got three stacks on her Dark Seal now, too, which is wonderful for her. And so this game is starting to get exciting. We're back to less than a couple hundred gold difference at this point. Less than 300 gold separates these two teams at uh, 11 minutes in. And the Zig's doing a great job of just trying to poke out the Akali Keeper off of the wave, and uh, even though she is uh, up in CS, she's got a kill, she's got an assist, she finds herself in a pretty dominant position in the game so far. Here comes Mundo trying to get on to the... Uh, Onto the Lilia, but we're going to see this Tristana taking a lot of damage. The heal comes out. The alt comes through for Ziggs, and they're able to lock up the kill. The alt come, uh, the flash comes through for Nautilus as well, as he tries to get away and survive. He does so, but that's going to be four members roaming down from the side of Kosa Gaming to lock up a kill onto the ADC for MG Dome. Tristana will fall. They're going to get some turret plates here, and with the Drake spawning in just under 10 seconds, they are going to find themselves in a good position to go ahead and try and lock this up. Heal comes out to try and save her con, but oh, he is not able to get out of there, and the Blast Cone does not save him. Akali making things happen. She's able to get two kills here. She's going to fly over. She's going to go back onto the Trundle now, and she'll go ahead and get out of there. They are going to find themselves with three men down here, able to start working on the Drake, but it could be outnumbered here in a moment. We'll see what happens. Um, really well played from both teams there. The Akali is now setting on three kills. Two Drakes go over to the side of Casa Gaming Rampage. But with that, they are losing some kills in the gold advantage now in favor of MC Domed. Kled taking a couple turret shots, no big deal. He knows Mundo's on the bot side. Uh, he knows uh, Trundle's on the bot side. He just saw him down there a little bit ago. So he's got time to try and pressure and maybe knock this turret down in response. Tristana, meanwhile, just going ahead and wailing on the turret, trying to lock up some of those turret plates before they fall off here in the next minute or so. They are going to get the last one for themselves. Congratulations. And that will be the turret answered back on the top side from the Kled. Looks like we've got Mundo in the area, though. He's going to come down for a gank on the bot side. 
we could see uh, we see the exhaust go down onto the Tristana. They're trying to follow up. She's able to get knocked up. Ezreal's coming into the area, and that's going to be Tristana falling down. We've got a TP coming in from the Kled now on the top side. They're trying to back out of there and get away. TP coming down from the uh, from the tr uh, Trundle. It's a 4v2 in the area as Kled has to back away, and Nautilus finds himself about ready to get pinched by the... Uh, by the um, by the Ziggs here, as well as the rest of the team, they find themselves two to four, but Akali is pretty big. That's going to be the Nautilus falling. The Ezreal all comes down and locks up the kill, or at least locks up the damage for Mundo to lock up the kill. Now it's a 2v4 again on the side. Oh, it's a 5v4, 5v3. More people joining left and right. Kled coming in with his ult. They're trying to poke out. They find themselves, uh, the uh, Ziggs ult comes down, doesn't hit anybody. Akali taking some damage. They find themselves pretty low. MG Dome having to get back. The Ziggs pops them back. Kled not able to run away. He's trying to blast away, and and he's going to fall over to the side of Ziggs. It's now a three for four in the area as they're able to lock up a kill onto the trundle. And that's going to be the Tristana falling again. She's seeing more gray screen than not here. Akali barely going to get away. She's getting chased down by the Ziggs. She might get tower dope. It's going to be hard to tell what happens. She will fall to the Ziggs. Now you've got Tristana. And, uh, I'm sorry. You've got Lilia and Nautilus in the bot lane just getting chased and poked out. They're going to do some invading and take some stuff from the bot side here. Very well played from Kosa Gaming. Uh, they tried to see. We tried to see a re-engage coming out of the side of MG Domed there. They thought they'd find themselves in a position to maybe try and get a pick kill. All they got was the Trundle, but what they lost was almost four to five kills. The Tristana died twice. The Nautilus died once. The Akali fell. The Kled fell. It was not a very good setup for the side of MG Domed. And now that we find ourselves at 15 minutes into the game, we are going to see that there is a little over a 1,000 gold lead in favor of Kosa Gaming. Let's take a look at the lane gold real quickly. We've got about 600 gold up on Trundle. We've got about 200 gold up on Mundo. We've got about 100 gold up on the Ziggs. And we've got about 100 gold up on the Tristana. And Rakan's sitting pretty with 600 gold more than the Nautilus. So, love what we're seeing here. The engage coming down from the Kled onto the Trinal. Not much will come of it. Uh, Lily is in the area. Nautilus is in the area. Um, Squire Bloom popped. And uh, the Rift Herald is up. So, I would imagine both teams are going to be vying for this objective since the Drake won't be up for another minute 50 on the map. That's Nautilus. He gets engaged in from the Rakan, taking some damage, finds himself out of position. And he will fall to the Ziggs. That's a 4-0 and 2 Ziggs setting on about 109 CS most in the game right now. He finds himself very large and in charge. And uh, trying to get some damage onto the Rakan. Not going to do anything with it at this point. They're going to go ahead and back off. They know they're down a man, but they don't know where the Ziggs is, so they got to give respect. They've also got these two members from the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage working on this Rift Herald. It'll be their second one of the game. Cled in the area, he might try and make something happen, but he won't be able to. And uh, Kali gets the bot side tier one turret in response. So we've got an even state in terms of turrets on the map. Uh, you know, not more than a little over a thousand gold difference at 15, 16 minutes in. We've still got a great game going. Um, if you're watching in the comments, let me know. Uh, or in the chat, let me know. Is this game how you expected it to unfold? Are you liking what you're seeing? Um, who do you think is going to win at this point where we stand? Don't all respond at once. I know it's crowded in here with all three of you. And nothing too crazy going on in the map. Kled's setting up here for a possible little pick. He's going to try and go in. He gets the, he's going to get the pull onto the Trundle. He's doing some damage. He's got him chunked out a little bit. The uh, the Rift Herald is on the Trundle. They're going to try and put this pressure. The pull comes through again. He is just trying to make sure he's not able to utilize the Rift Herald. But that is going to be the Rift Herald getting dropped on the top side. The Ezreal all comes out as the fight breaks out in the bot side uh, river. Nautilus and Lilia both able to get away after taking only a little bit of damage. And that's going to be the Tier 2 topside turret falling. And that's going to be Kled dying over to the side of Trundle as the PTA is proc. He's just going to barely get away, but the Kled will not be able to survive as the Trundle will flash over for him. Mundo's able to lock up a kill onto the Nautilus. He'll fall over to the Tristana. Kali's able to get two kills, one on the Rakan, one on the Ezreal. And this is going to be the Ziggs finding himself in a very bad position. That's going to be a triple kill going over to the Akali. She is now sitting on 6-1-3. and three, And they are going to be able to secure their first drake of the game for MG Dome.
Meanwhile, Trundle putting pressure, knocking down the base turret on the top side, getting a charge off from the Rift Herald onto the uh, onto the end head. And this is a hell of a game so far. Both teams playing their hearts out, back and forth trading. Um, I like what I'm seeing here. It does look like the side of Costa, uh, Costa Gaming Rampage is in a relatively dominant position, even though they've only got about a thousand gold lead at this point, 18 minutes in. They do have a lot of pressure on the top side. They do have um, two drakes, and they do find themselves making most of the plays. However, the Akali is really starting to turn on. Now that she's got her Rift Maker, she's got 18 stacks on her Magi's, and she's going into the Zonia, so she'll be a real threat. Um, not that she isn't now, but she will be a real threat here in a little bit, that she's able to just burst people down. Um, so we'll have to see how the rest of this game goes underway. That being said, we've got a quick little check-in on the gold lead. Yeah, that trundle is up almost 2,000, just a little bit under. Jungle's relatively even, but that Akali is up almost 2,000 now. So, we are seeing the trundle get big, we're seeing the Akali get big, we're seeing the Lilia and everybody else start to have influence in these games. And uh, I love what I'm seeing here so far. And the Rakan, a little out of position here, but it looks like the Nautilus and the Tristan are going to let it uh, glide because they do not want to go ahead and get engaged on by the rest of the team. So very well played from that bot side duo to not get in there. And I'm sorry if you hear a cat right now. Somebody is very upset with me, and I apologize. Both teams doing a relatively decent job of vision. You can see the blue line up on that top side. Oh, here comes an engage from the Akali onto the... Uh, Onto the trundle, the ignite comes down. The PTA proct on the Akali, so they're both going to try and fight it out here. It could be anybody if he's able to get a good solid cube, but he will fall. Lilia not able to get an assist on that. Even Akali getting the solo kill onto the trundle, finding herself at seven, one, and three. Very, very good plays. Now she's got 22 stacks on that Medjai's. Here comes uh, Kled trying to get some damage. He's able to just burst down the Ziggs. The alt does nothing to him. That's two more kills going over to the side of MG Dome. And they are starting to get turned on, if you know what I mean. Very good job coming out of the side of MG Dome. As they're able to trade over two kills for none, get those kills onto their solo lane carries. And we are going to start seeing this Akali become a very big threat. She's completed her Zonias. She's completed her Rift Maker. She's almost at full stacks on her match eyes. She's got her Sork Boots, and she is going to be coming online all the way. Meanwhile, this Ziggs, setting at just one and a half items... He's almost done with the Zonias. He does not have the Medjai's, and uh, you can feel the difference in these fights as she is able to just burn through somebody like Trundle, who is quite tanky. He does have the Hullbreaker, though, so he's looking to just be on his lonesome and make a split push, uh, split push, um, make a push to split the top side. Sorry. Words did not want to agree with me there. We see both these bot lane duos now in the mid trying to buy out for this mid lane, uh, mid tier as the two mid lane tier one turrets both stand. Whoever can get that will have an advantage in pressure. And we're going to see Drake joining the map here in about one and a half minutes. That will likely be the next objective that we see somebody fight over. The alt comes down, it lands on the Tristan, and not too much damage coming from it. Just going to help get the push on the wave, it looks like. Uh, but it could be, yes, Akali's going to go in and they might be able to lock up a kill here. No, very mobile. Oh, that's the uh, that's the uh, Ezreal getting caught out by the Nautilus Q, and he will get blown up. That is going to be the incredible play. The Lily is able to time the zonies perfectly, hit him with an E, and knock him down. The burn damage coming from her passive, as well as the Leandries, as well as the Morelicon, is going to lock down that kill. And that's two more kills being traded over the side of MG Domed. They now find themselves with a little over, uh, a little under a 1, 000, uh, 2,000 gold lead. And here's this uh, Ziggs. He has to flash, and he still falls over to the side of Akali. That's going to be another kill traded over to MG Dome to 3 for 0, and they're going to take this opportunity to try and secure Baron. Trundle's in the area, but I don't think there's much he can do. He gets caught out by the Q from the Nautilus. He gets caught out by the Akali. She's going in heavy on him, and they're going to lock up this kill. That's going to be the Trundle falling down to the Tristana. They're going to still work on the, uh, the Baron here, and they're going to be able to get it on everybody. Nobody's going to fall. They are having all the luck in the world. Luck, uh, not luck. They're having all of the pressure in the world right now as they'll secure Baron.
really good fights coming out of both sides of these teams. The Akali is now 8-1. and one. The Lilia, now late game, is starting to get some kills. Teleport coming down from the side of Kled over to the... Um, Pixel Bush in the bot side. Kled pushing up forward. They know the streak's going to be up. They are looking to put pressure and make things happen. We'll have to see how it breaks down here. Dragon's been started by the side of MG Dome. They find themselves with a lot of pressure on the map. They're backing off a little bit, trying to drag it out. But it's uh, the Mountain Drake is the one that's the hardest to pull out because it just doesn't want to go one way or another. They finally got it where it looks like they want it. They're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Really wise to go ahead and drop it over. That's going to be uh, Mountain Drake going over the side of MG Dome as Lilia will secure the fourth Drake of the game. And stacking up these Mountain Drakes on the side of MG Domed is going to do a lot for them in the team fights. Um, especially as that Akali goes and dives in, having that extra shield will do a lot for her. Um, same thing with the Lilia, and if the Tristana wants to go ahead and hop in, she'll be able to do the same thing. So, I like what we are seeing right now, uh, this game, and we might see a pause here in just a second. bear with us the game will likely pause for or freeze for just a moment since we had a pause it does that sometimes i apologize um, but we're going to see a lot of pressure coming in from the side of mg domed and there's the freeze i was discussing look at the vision red and blue both fighting over that drake area great vision control coming out of the side of blue but unfortunately it was drake uh the red side that was able to lock it up as they had nothing inside the baron pit and they made it look like they had leached over on the top side of that uh that groove for Mountain Drake, but then they pulled it back down to the bottom. So all the alts that were expended trying to lock down that Drake again um, were not able to be secured. And we've got four minutes till any objective, the uh, Baron or the Drake spawns again. So we're going to see just a lot of solid pushing here as the red, side, uh, the red team, the MG Dome team, is going to go ahead and push in with the Baron buff. And uh, Akali, not afraid to play up here. She's... Uh, She's very big. She's sitting on full stacks of Magi. She looks like she's going into her uh, her Rabadons. And so we're going to see this mid-tier 1 turret falling. And they're going to put pressure on the mid-tier two, uh, two tier, tier 2 turret. They're setting at almost a uh, little under a 5,000k gold lead now at this point. Tier 2 turret going to fall on the top side, it looks like. Yes, it will. And they're going to push and pull this map really, really well. You've got two players on the top side pushing it in. There's nothing that the Trundle can really do. You're going to have to send Mundo over. And now you've got a, you've got a number advantage across the map. So they're, do, they're doing a really good job of pushing and pulling here as they need to. There's the Lilia. She's taking some damage. The alt comes out from the Lilia, trying to lock it down. Spell immune. However, the Kled alt lets them get back out of there, and they're going to tape dancing around. It's a 5v5 as everybody's in the area. And uh, looks like they want to make something happen on this top side since that top, uh, mid wave got pushed out. There's the Ziggs. Oh, nothing will fall through. That's going to be Lilia getting locked up, and she will die. Now you've got a fight brewing. It's a 4v1. It's a 4v5 in favor of Kosa Gaming. They're going to chase it down a little bit. The Baron buff has fallen, and... Nothing more will come of it. They're going to go ahead and just accept that they only lost two turrets off that push. Not the end of the world. None of them were base turrets, and they were able to get a kill. So, all things considered, and it was a shutdown on the Lilia, too. So, this is looking decent for them. They find themselves a little under, uh, a little over 4k gold down now. Um, both Drake's tied. Drake going to be joining the map in 218, Baron in 220. So, we're going to see a fight brewing. I'm interested to see how the objective is going to break down. One team could go down to Baron while they split uh, up to Baron while the other team goes down to Drake. Although this being sole point, I'd imagine both teams want to fight over Drake right now. And the winning team from that team fight will roam over to Baron. We'll have to see how it's played out. It could be a good decision though to let one team or the other have it and run to Baron and try and get that pressure. But we'll have to see if somebody catches on to what's going on and how they play around it defensively. Red has a lot of vision in the area of Drake right now. They've got some in the jungle. Nautilus put in even more so they know what's going on very good control um, after the game i will want to check vision scores because i think or not vision scores but check how many wards were placed and cleared out from these teams because i think they are doing a really good job right now of vying for the vision blue going to do the same thing though and clear it all out at this point so blue is going to know what's going on and red will not drake joining us in just about 120 dragon going to join us uh baron going to join us here in about 120 as well
Macaulay playing forward. Red side going ahead and dropping some vision. Doing what they need to. Last minute little calibrations. And we're going to see the Drake spawning here in about one minute. The Baron spawning in about one minute. Everything's about to go down. Akali fishing with her uh, dagger there, trying to get onto somebody. Mundo going to get caught with the Nautilus Q. The alt comes down from the uh, Lilia. And, no, I'm sorry, the alt did not come down from the Lilia. It almost did, but they are not going to go ahead and burn it here. We've got Trundle and Kled fighting in the top side. Teleport up on both these champions so they can join the Drake fight when it starts here in a couple seconds. Meanwhile, PTA procced onto the Kled. He's taking some damage, having to run away. There's the W to give him some movement speed and slow it down a little bit. PTA still doing some damage, but look at this Kled. He is starting to output some damage onto the Trundle now, fighting in a wave. There's some damage, but that's going to be the Kled. He falls over to the Trundle, and that is going to be a kill. Um, both traded over as Mundo will fall too, it looks like. Um, he fell a little bit earlier in that fight, so it is 4-4 four four on the map. Three members from the side of Kosa Gaming in the area, but Trundle's going to go ahead and trade out a Inhib. So even if they lose Drake, they still got a little bit of pressure off this, and that's going to be the Drake going over to the side of MC Dome. We've got a fight breaking out. Re uh, Rakan might fall here. He's barely going to survive. They're trying to just get out of the Drake pit, but that's going to be the Nautilus hook landing onto the Ziggs, and that's going to be the burn coming from the Lilia, and nice! Ziggs will fall there, and now you've got a 4v2 breaking out here in the river. The Ezreal having to flash away just to survive the Mundo coming back after just spawning the hill fall as well. This game has taken a shift in favor of MC Dome. They're up about 6,000 gold. They're going to go ahead and march up to the Baron as Kled will respond to the top wave. And they find themselves with a the man advantage on the map for the next 30 seconds. And this Lilia just abusing the enemy jungle. She's going to go ahead and take the Gromp, take the blue buff, roam on over. Meanwhile, you've got Ezreal in the mid lane. Rakan up on the top side. He'll get spotted on vision. This Boom Scryer, uh, the Scryer's Bloom blasted. Uh, but they're already going to be able to secure this Drake. Nothing more will come over it. And that's going to be their second Baron of the game. They find themselves now with a 7,000 gold advantage. They're going to keep charging on. Uh, the win condition at this point for the side of Kosa Gaming. They did very good in the early game. They saw the Akali come online, they saw the Lily come online, and that empowered the Tristana. The only thing they can do at this point is try and have better vision, catch uh, catch a kill in rotation as they go to push and pull. But at this point, I don't know if even that will do. They need to get that shutdown from the Akali onto somebody like the Ezreal, onto somebody like the Ziggs. They need to get that shutdown from the Tristana and the Lily onto somebody as well. Right now, you've got a lot of gold setting in favor of the Trundle, and he's starting to fall off a little bit. He's doing great into the Kled, but he keeps getting burst down by that Akali. So you need to get that gold onto another carry so that they have some more function in the game. Again, Trundle defending against the Kled. The other four members going to push mid, and they're going to try and push and pull this map to get some uh, inhib pressure since they've got super minions crashing into the top. Akali thinking about going back, but no, she's going to come around mid and do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Kled going to back off and go ahead and answer the super minions. I think that makes sense. You'd rather have Akali come down and match with a team fight so that she can get in there and do some damage because right now that is where the gold stands. Kled, kind of the weakest. He's 2-7 and seven at this point. Not to say that he is weak, but the weakest on the team, and so it makes more sense to sacrifice him in the team fight and let him go ahead and roll over to the top side. The side of red, though, uh, I'd love to see them doing a little bit more here. They've got the 1-3-1 one, one set up. Both of the top and bottom waves are a little bit further out, so they're not really able to get much off of this, and their uh, Baron buff is going to be falling off here in about a minute or so. So they've got to try and make something happen here, or it's going to be sort of a waste of Baron. Good denial, but they won't be able to get too much off of it in terms of objectives, which is not what you want to see.
yeah, M uh, MG Delmed not quite able to utilize the Baron buff here. It looks like it's going to fall off in a moment without having been utilized to its fullest. And yeah, so no objectives coming out of that. They uh, actually, if anything, they were uh, they lost that inhib when the Drake fell, and so they find the Drake coming back up in a minute. They are on soul point. They need to lock up this Drake for the soul, and that should give them a nice little advantage. They're sitting at a nine thousand gold lead. They're up four kills. They're up one turret. They're up a Drake. But the only problem is they're not really able to utilize um, what's going on right now. You know, they find themselves really kind of. I don't want to say throwing because that's not what they're doing they're not throwing by any means but they are certainly on uh in a position where they're not utilizing their favor i would have liked to have seen a lot more aggressive plays coming out in the mid and bot lane um i would have liked to have seen uh you know with that with the super minions down on the top wave i don't know that there's much they can really do And the inhib is going to be back up, which will help them a lot, as they will not have to worry much about those super minions. Red team vying for the position as the Drake's going to be spawning here in five seconds. That's the Nautilus Q. It misses, only lands on some terrain. And he's taking quite a bit of damage, but so is that Mundo. Both the teams just going back and forth. They're going to rotate over the Drake, and looks like they might try and get it started here, but they... That's going to be a Q again coming from the Nautilus. Not a wise choice. Uh, he will fall. That's going to be the Zigzalt, and that's going to be Tristana falling now. Her shutdown gold going over onto the Trundle. Lilia trying to get some kills, and she trades over the Trundle for the bot side. That's going to be the Rakan falling as well. Now Mundo's down. It's a three for two trade in favor of MG Domed. Lilia hunting down, and she's able to lock up the Zigs. That will be the... Uh, Ezreal that falls, and so we are going to find a, our first ace of the game going over to the side of MG Domed at about 34 minutes into the game. Lilia, very low right now. I don't know if she's going to be able to solo this Drake. She's going to, yeah, she's got this. Um, she's going to go ahead and just melting it down. They know they don't have to contest with anybody for another 15 seconds. She, she can even use the smite early and go ahead and give herself some heal. That's going to be the mid base turret falling. And Akali knows that she is solo on the map against nobody but a mod, uh, nobody um, but a Rakan right now. She gets the first inhib there and very well played. If you're just tuning in, thank you very much. We've got a hell of a game right now. We've got MG Domed on the side of red, Kosa Gaming uh, Rampage on the side of blue. It's been a back and forth game, and there is about 11,000 gold difference um, right now. Early game went to the side of Kosa. However, now we find that MG Domed is putting the pressure on, and they are getting some objectives. Akali gets herself hit by the pillar, but she's going to manage to escape there, not able to get locked down, and she will survive. You've got the red team putting a lot of pressure into the blue side jungle, as uh, they can. They don't have to worry about any turrets for safety as far as the red team goes, so they can go ahead and feel free to farm both sides of the jungle here. That's more gold for them. That's more experience for them, and they're going to go ahead and get things started off. All right, we've got the Rakani. Misses is engaged, and so does the Nautilus. The Nautilus Qs have not been on point today. Uh, a couple, a lot of burn coming down onto the Rakan. We've got some damage coming down. The Ooh, the Ziggs barely able to get away there. It looks like he was about ready to flash, but he did not get it in there. That's going to be the Mundo taking some damage. He's starting to fall now, too. He's going to get chunked out. We're going to see the Ezreal try and arcane shift away, but he will fall. It's a 3-0 and trade in favor of the side of MG Dome. They've got an inhib expo uh, down already here in the mid, and they're going to put the pressure on. They're going to knock down the base turret. They can take the shots. They're not worried about it. Rakan trying to create some peel. He uses his Zhonya's, but he's going to fall, and it's going to be five members here. Trundle on the top side, not able to back. Uh, I don't know if Trundle would have been able to do much there anyways, but you hate to see him pushing that far and back that late. The first game of the series is going to go over to MG Domed against Kosa Gaming Rampage. Stay tuned for the next game of the series, and thank you very much for watching.
All right, and thank you for tuning back in. We've got the draft going underway. We are going to start with MG Doomed planning out the jinx. Uh, MG Doomed was able to lock up the first game in the series. Early game went to Kosa, late game went to MG Doomed. So we're going to go ahead and see the jinx ban come through here first. And we're also going to see the Evelyn ban come through as well. The alley ban will come out. And uh, Kosa not wanting any of that Akali after last game. Makes sense that they went ahead and put a ban that way. Akali absolutely running over the game. Zig's going to go ahead and get banned out here as well. And the Viego will be the final ban from the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage. Blue one pick last time went to Mundo, so I'm excited to see how the priorities go on this game. Uh, Mundo did well in the early game, but he kind of fell off there, and he continued to get burst down by the Akali and the Lilia, um, which was a great combo to have. We are going to see the Mundo pick, so I'm excited to see uh, what the answer is for this um, for this time. Mundo going over the side of MG Domed this time, so we'll see how they're able to utilize it over how uh, Kosa Gaming Rampage did at last game. The R1 pick coming through. Nocturne. Going to be locked in. I love the knock pick. Uh, knock alt is huge um, after he hits level 6 to be able to provide ganks. And also with objective taking, things of that nature. Um, and it's just really good. Uh, I do like him in lane as well. I've seen him play top here. Uh, over the last couple patches, he has been put more towards the jungle. So I expect that's where we're going to see him. Uh, I'd also assume that we're going to see the Mundo in the jungle since that's where he was last game. But he could also be put in the top lane. So... We'll keep an eye out. Galio. Now, here's the setup. 
Galio and Nocturne are a great combo together. The Nocturne goes in, uses his paranoia, Galio follows up, and now you have what could have been a 1v2 turn into a 3v2, or a 2v2 turning into a 4v2. I love the setup with Nocturne and Galio. A lot of alt combinations there. They're certainly thinking about how they compare those two together, um, especially if you've got Noc in the jungle um, and Galio in mid. Now, if Galio's support and Noc's in the jungle or Nocturne's top or something like that, we won't see those kind of combos coming out until more of the mid to late game um, but if they put those guys in mid and jungle you've got a lot of early game potential that once they hit level six to go ahead and start diving in on people and making a lot of stuff happen we're going to see tom kench locked in for the side of mg doomed they did not bench the kench as they so wisely said last game um, so we are going to get to see him with his new kit rolling out this is one of the first times i will see him playing since three work so i'm excited for it um, very likely going to be going into the bot lane with the vein now, we could see the Kench go in other roles. I know that people do like to play him mid and uh, top sometimes. I don't expect that's what we're going to see. I think we're going to more than likely see it here in the uh, in the bot lane with the Vayne. But one thing that I would love to see is maybe we get a Tom Kench in one of the solo lanes and we get somebody else with the Vayne like... Uh, well, I don't want to give any suggestions because I know some of the team members are watching, but I would love to see. They could make this a little bit spicier on the side of MG Dome, so I want to see how that goes. And that's going to be the Kog'Maw locked in. I love the Kog'Maw, I love the Vayne. Both of those champions, hyperscalers, doing a lot of attack damage. Um, they definitely offer a lot of presence on the map, so I want to see how it all plays out. We're going to see a Morgana ban come out of the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage. Um, well played. That that offers a lot of peel, a lot of lockdown, a lot of CC and utility, so I don't like seeing the Morgana, at least in the team that they have here. I think that's a wise choice to ban it out. And the Aurelia going to be taken out here. Uh, again, I know that she had a, uh, a recent little rework here, and she is kind of strong from what I understand. So going to see her taken out of the game. And the last two bands coming through, the first one going to be for the side of Kosa Gaming at Rampage. Nautilus. Nautilus was very influential last game. That being said, he did miss some of those hooks. It felt really bad for him in the team fight happening around Drake as he twice hooked the uh, mountain structure there over by uh, chickens on the bot side and pulled himself into the team twice and that second time he got blown up so it was not very fun for him there um, we'll see how they have a response here Alawi you don't get to see a lot of Alawi in games but I'm excited for it she's got a great team fight presence with her alt she can also split push and force multiple people to have to answer so I love the Akali um, Trundle gonna go ahead and get pulled out of this game as well he was a huge early game threat in the game taking over um, the top lane so we'll see him removed from here as well okay so we could see the vein going top and the caitlin going bot with the caitlin pick coming in i love spicy picks like this thank you to both teams for making this an interesting match and the lulu that's what i was going to recommend do the lulu lulu is great you deny it one from the kogma who pairs great with a lulu um but regardless if you have that on the vein or the Ka if you have that on the vein or the caitlin you're going to be incredible there All right, and we are going to see the Karma as the final pick locked in. You're very welcome, Marital. Don't you worry. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and have the teams locking into the client draft. Um, I love the draft that we've got here. Go ahead and review it. If you're in the chat, let me know who you think is going to win this game. We've got Mundo, Kench, Vayne, Caitlin, Lulu versus Nocturne, Galio, Kogma, Alawi, and Karma. Um, it's, it's a spicy pick because we could see, uh, I'm assuming that we're going to see the Tom Kench go top, maybe the Vayne mid, 
Mundo Jungle with the Caitlyn Lulu bot side. Um, but the, the I have no idea. We've also got the Galio Nocturne alt combo on the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage, the Alawi on the top side able to do a lot of damage, and the Kog'Maw and the Karma uh, able to do a lot in their lane as far as poke and everything else. So we have a hell of a game coming up for game two of this series. Stay tuned as we get into this game, and thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs> And I wanted to go over what we're seeing here in the actual draft so far and where they put the lane positions. So we're going to have Tom Kinch going into Alawi, the Vayne going into Galio, and Caitlyn Lulu going into Kogma Karma. Um, Nocturne and Mundo will be the jungles for this game. So very excited what we're seeing here. I think um, 
I don't know. I haven't seen the Tom Kinch really played since the rework. I've only seen him in one game so far, so I, I'm not sure how the Alawi matchup is going to go. But I think that the side of MG Doomed has a great setup for team fights. But I also think the side of Kosa Gaming can really work the skirmishes in their favor with the Nocturne Galio combo. Um, Kogma scales super well. Vayne scales really well. So does the Caitlyn. They have the advantage of two ADCs on the side of MG Doomed. So we have a lot of potential going back and forth in this game. I'm excited for you guys to watch. And please stay tuned as we go ahead and get loaded up. All right, so we've got Teleport coming through on all the solo laners except for Vayne. She is going to go ahead and go with the Cleanse, which makes a lot of sense for this enemy team. We've got Heal on both of our ADCs, Exhaust on the Lulu, and we've got Ignite on the uh, Karma. Challenge and Smite coming out on both of our junglers here. The Corrupt and Potion going over to Alawi. And it looks like we're going to see a 5 point out across both teams this time. Last time, the side of Kosa Gaming decided to do a, a top side invade and try and catch off the top laner. They weren't able to lock it up, though. Some early trades coming out between the Nocturne and the Mundo. I'd argue Mundo won that. He's going to keep chasing out. There's the Karma putting a little damage onto the Lulu. These teams are not afraid to step up. And, uh, yeah, poor Lulu had to take a little bit of damage there. That is a beautiful back. I want us all to recognize that. So, folks, we've got the second game between MG Domed and Kosa Gaming. Blue side is going to be MG Domed. Red side going to be Kosa Gaming Rampage. And uh, this game is going to go ahead and get underway as the minions join the rift with the summoners. Nocturne going to start top side. Mundo going to start bot side. And everything getting off to a pretty good start here so far, considering Nocturne had to solo that, uh, he didn't have to solo, it looks like he got a little leash from the Alawi, but he is certainly off to a little bit slower start than the Mundo. Both going to opt for a full top and bot side clear of their respective sides, so I like what we're seeing there. And this game is underway. The Caitlyn playing up very well. She's trying to poke this Kogma off the wave, and she's doing a great job landing some of those shots onto him. But she finds herself a little out of position here as she moves more towards the river, and she takes quite a damage, uh, quite a bit of damage in the uh, meantime. Polymorph coming through. <laughs> great job to turn that Karma into a little kitten and get her out of there. And this Caitlyn finds herself up about a wave. Kogma might be able to catch some of it back to himself, but uh, she's certainly up in the CS department, and she is having a good time right now. She's just pushing this in, trying to deny as much of the gold from them as possible and poke them out as much as possible. They, uh, they're they going to try and keep it freeze here, I'd imagine, and give that Nocturne an opportunity as he's finishing up his bot side clear just now. And Nocturne going to go ahead and opt to lock up the bot side scuttle. Top side scuttle gets locked up by the Mundo. 
There's the flash coming out of the Alawi, the teleport coming in from the uh, Galio, and it's going to be a fight breaking out here on the top side. They're going to try and go in and make something happen. Nocturne, to, um, Gal uh, Tom Kench taking some damage here. That's the flash. They're going to try and make it happen, and Alawi's going to be the first blood going over to the side of Mundo. Now Galio getting chased down. He has to flash away just to stay alive. And MG Domed is going to get that first blood at just about four minutes into the game. Very good play from the side of MG Dome to have that Mundo and the Tom Kench in there. The teleport coming through from the Galio up top side, but they went ahead and followed up the re-engage. The flash came out of Tom Kench, and he's able to lock up the kill. So really, really, really good um, good job. A lot of poke coming down now onto the Caitlyn and the Lulu here as the Kogma and the uh, Karma going ahead and pushing this wave in. Mundo roaming up. He's going to stop by... He's not going to stop by Krugs. He's going to go for a gank here. He's going to take the long way around. And the exhaust comes down onto the Kog'Maw. The Karma able to get out the Ignite and the Stun. But she does manage to... Uh, the Lulu does manage to survive. And now it's going to be the Karma who finds herself in a position. She gets blown up. Caitlyn barely alive. Mundo following through. The Flash comes out of Kog'Maw. However, the Mundo is going to try and lock it down here. He might be able to lock it up. And that's going to be a kill going over to Mundo. He now finds himself 2-0-1 oh, on the map. Really good ganks coming out of this Mundo early game. He's able to lock up a kill for himself on the top, able to lock up a kill for himself on the bottom, and get the kill of the Karma over to the Caitlyn. So really good plays here so far. There's the uh, there's the taunt trying to go in onto the uh, onto the bay. However, the Nocturne's in the area. Nothing much will come of it as she is a relatively mobile champion. Mundo's going to lock up the first Drake. It is a Cloud Drake. We'll have an Infernal Nyx, which means we'll get an Ocean or a Mountain Soul. Um, I'd love to see a Mountain Soul. I think that'll give the opportunity for the Vaitland to, uh, for the Vein to get uh, a couple Condemns. Um, I, so I think that would be really interesting to see. And right now, we've got a huge gold lead in favor of the Vein. Everything relatively equal in the bot lane besides that kill on the Caitlyn. She came back with an entire Noon Quiver. Meanwhile, um, the poor Kogma came back with only two long swords and boots. So you're going to feel the difference here in lane shortly, and I would expect it to start snowballing a little bit in favor of the awesome guy and Sokarch. Lowey, she's going to get herself out of position again. She gets eight, and she gets blown up in the Mundo. For the third time, will gank successfully and get his third kill of the game. That Mundo is certainly making his presence felt across this map. Really, really well played from the Mundo to lock up his third kill of the game at just about six and a half minutes in. And he's down several camps. The Nocturne power farming, trying to get to level six as fast as he can. He's there. Um, but he is just invading the jungle, trying to clear what he can, and will at least deny some of this from the uh, from the Mundo. There's the Caitlyn again, taking some of that poke damage early. There's not much she can really do to avoid it. She's trying to throw out her traps to keep some distance, but nothing more happens. There's the Nocturne ult coming down onto the boss side, Jill. It looks like he's trying to land it on Caitlyn. She gets poked off, and everybody's going to turn on Lulu. It's four members from the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage, and they're going to get their first kill of the game on Lulu with a good, solid Roman turret dive. That was the combo you're looking for. Nocturne, Galio, both using their ult and synchronization and turning a 2v2 into a 4v2. Teleport coming down from the, uh, from the Tom Kench. He's in the area now. It's still a 2v4 as Tom Kench and Mundo are the only ones in the area, but Van's roaming down and Caitlyn's falling behind, hoping that somebody can make something happen. Nothing's going to come of it as the Karma E empowered from the mantra will get them on out of there.
And this Lally, meanwhile, just farming some turrets off that top side with the uh, with the Tom Kench gone, going to go ahead and get herself in a decent gold position here. She's up several waves over the Tom Kench, and she's got a couple turrets. So we'll check in with the state of gold here at around the 10 minute mark and see where the lanes stand. There's the uh, there's the jump coming in. There's some damage coming down. She. The Tom Kips is going to eat the Alawi, but I don't know how much damage it's going to do. She's trying to stay alive. The Grey Health popped. And uh, this could be the Tom Kips falling over to the side of MG uh, Costa Gaming Rampage as they're able to lock up their second kill on the Tom Kench, he now finds himself dead and seeing his first gray screen of the map. And Alawi is going to continue to go topside and just wail on that turret and get herself some more gold. Mundo Ping, and he's going to come in on the Galio. Some damage coming through. The Galio able to just barely skirt away. And Nocturne working on the Rift Herald, but he might find himself having to abandon that. Yes, he is, because the Mundo's on his way up. And some damage coming through onto the Kog'Maw. He's getting chunked down pretty low. The uh, Lulu not there to help follow up or empower the Caitlyn as she was kind of stuck off in the bush. But that was a lot of damage onto the Kog'Maw from the Caitlyn. Like I said, you would be able to feel it. She's sitting on a pickaxe and noon quiver. Meanwhile, he's just got the agility cloak and the noon quiver. So you can feel more damage coming out of that Caitlyn at this point. It's beginning to hurt. And this vein continuing to farm up. Let's take a quick check into the gold. Yes, it's the Alawi. She's up almost 400 gold over the Tom Kench. It's going to be the Mundo who's up over 1,000 gold on the Nocturne. We've got a fight coming down. The Nocturne ult comes through. The paranoia lands. The fear coming down onto the Lulu. He might be able to lock up the kill, and that is going to be... Caitlyn that's able to get the kill onto the uh, onto the Kogma trade kill at least over for her and the uh, the Nocturne is able to lock up that Lulu so that does turn out to be a two for one trade in favor of Kosa Gaming Rampage. The Vayne finds herself up 800 gold, 200 gold onto the Caitlyn and it's about a thousand gold over to the side of Karma over the Lulu. Really good play from the Caitlyn, um, abandoning the Lulu, just trying to get that trade kill onto the Kog'Maw. you got to know you're dead there. You're out of position. It's a 3v2. The Nocturne's already behind you. So very good job from her to decide to just trade over the kill. That's going to be the second Drake going over to the uh, side of MG Domed. And we are going to get to see a Mountain Drake. So that's going to give the Vayne more opportunities to land some of those Condemns. And uh, I think that's going to be fun to see as the team fights in the mid-late game breakout. Right now, gold is still relatively equal. We're at 12 minutes in, and there's less than a couple hundred gold still, uh, separating the two teams. Alawi alt comes down, tries to lock up that Tom Kench, but nothing comes of it. With the Alawi out, out now, you've got Undo in the area. He's going to try and lock up the kill here, but you've got Nocturne as well, and the Galio coming through. The Taunt lands. He's going to survive. No, he's going to fall. The Tom Kench will fall to the Galio, and the Mundo could fall as well to the Galio. That's going to be the Nocturne alt landing the kill, and that's going to be Mundo and Tom Kench both falling to the side of Costa Gaming Rampage as they get themselves a little extra gold here, and they have the right players in the right place at the right time. Really good play from them. Nocturne was already in the area. Mundo was already in the area, so it was a 2v2. But the Galio teleport coming through at just the right time. And Galio was able to put the pressure on and help them lock up the kill onto the Tom Kench. And then the Nocturne is able to all in and lock up the Mundo. And we have a pause in the game. As it looks like the Alawi is going to disconnect for a second. Everybody's going to go ahead and get back into the game here. And because there is a pause, we are going to see a small freeze in the game. So I apologize when that occurs. It shouldn't be too long, depending on how long the pause is. Uh, bear with us and we'll get there. There we go. 
We'll wait for the freeze here in a minute to come up. When it does, again, my apologies. But we've got a heck of a game going so far. Lots of leads across the map. Alawi doing really well. Vayne doing really well. The Mundo and the Nocturne both letting their presence be felt. And this bot lane has been battling it out left and right. Um, we've seen teleports coming in. We've seen alts used. There's the freeze I was discussing. Um, but we've been seeing a lot of back and forth. I love where we are at in this game. If you're watching in the comments, I'd love to know what you're thinking about the game right now. Who do you think is going to win? We're 13 minutes in. Um, pretty even in gold. Um, relatively even in kills. Two drakes over the side of MG Domed. But I'd love to hear who you are rooting for. Let me know. First turret going to go over to the Vayne as she is able to lock up that mid-tier 1 turret from Galio. He's been having his presence felt on the map, but that has left that mid-turret exposed. Vayne, in the meantime, has just been plucking away, and she will be able to get all of the turret plates as well as the first turret gold. She's going to find herself with a hell of a lead now. The Alawi pull barely missing there. Mundo trying to match the mid wave while the Vayne backs real quickly. Make sure that nothing goes too much over in the side of Galio's way. And there's the Kogma trying to go in. Caitlyn finds herself almost getting stunned, but she's able to use her net to get out of there. Nocturne ult coming down again. Galio ult going to follow up. Some damage coming down onto the Lulu. She's barely alive right now. She is going to survive. Her R did get burned there, and the Caitlyn has herself ignited. Nocturne, meanwhile, roaming around the side, trying to lock up the kill on the Caitlyn. She's able to do so. The Karma gets it. Tom Kench able to try to solo kill onto the Alawi top side. So we've got some back and forth going on here. A lot of ults expended, but that is a great dive combo. The Nocturne ult into the Galio ult can change the tides of any situation. And the bot side duo of the side of Casa Game, uh, Cosa Gaming Rampage is going to lock up their first turn of the game on the bot side. Fifteen minutes in, let's do a quick check of the gold. Um, Alawi still up two hundred gold, but that gap is closing as the tr as the Tom Kench has been able to lock up some CS and get a kill. We've got the uh, jungles relatively equal. The Bane is almost two thousand up on the Galio here. The taunt comes through, taking some damage, manages to roll away. It's three v one, but she's not scared. Excuse me. And we've got uh, everything relatively equal in the bot lane. That Karma is still up about 1,500 gold on the Lulu. Um, doing a really good job. She's locked down two kills and had three assists. So Karma is doing a great job of playing her mind out of this game like it is her job. Mountains, uh, Mountain Drake going to be joining the map here in about 30 seconds. And we see both teams vying for position in that area. Meanwhile, we're 16 minutes in. No team has managed to secure the Rift Herald at this point. It's still up on the map. Um, I want to know when we're going to be able to see that get locked up, if we will see it get locked up. That would be a huge influx of gold for either one of these teams giving some pressure. Um, it would be nice to see them put a prio on that. Meanwhile, we've got Vayne taking the top side, Scuttle getting some additional vision, and now roaming top side to help lock up this Alawi. The Alawi alt is available, though, so they could find themselves in a rough spot here. There's the Condemn, there's the shot, and Vayne is able to lock up the kill onto the Alawi. She is huge at this point, setting with her Kraken Slayer, her Berserker Boots, and she, she's got two long swords as well, so she's really bumping out damage at this point. Tom Kench finally taking on his role um, to help support this other ADC in the game. You've basically got two bot lane duos roaming around the map now. Um, it's going to get weird, and they're going to opt to put a lot of that gold onto the Vayne as she's going to get top gold uh, for the turret as well. And there it is, two turrets now over the side of MG Domed. Kosa Gaming Rampage has one turret. Two drakes over the side of... Oh, here comes the Nocturne ult. Lands on the Lulu. Lands the fear. Putting out damage. Lulu's going to fall here. She tries to get the heal. It doesn't work. She dies. Caitlyn gets blown up by the Galio. Now we're going to see Mundo fall. It's a 3-V-O trade in favor of Kosa Gaming Rampage. And they're going to go ahead and work their way after taking that... Uh, after ta Ooh. After taking that kill on the Lulu, they were able to just go ahead and mop up the rest of the team in that area. They find themselves with a nice answer back, and uh, yeah, 
Vane wasn't there. She can't protect everybody all at once. She's going to go ahead and catch, catch the bot wave. But we're going to have to see what MG Dome's response is to this Galio, uh, this Nocturne Galio duo, as they are able to put a lot of pressure on the map between the two of them and make things happen. So I want to see what the answer is coming out of MG Domed. I think what they've got to do is they've got to focus on that vein. Let her get big. She's already huge. But continue to play around the vein. You might even swap out for Caitlyn, let her get solo gold, um, and let the vein kind of take on that quote-unquote ADC role. I don't know what the right answer is. Obviously, these guys are all higher levels than me, and they're playing their hearts out. But um, that's just what I'm seeing from my standpoint. Galio now matching bot side to the vein. Not much the vein can really, uh, not much the Galio can really do. Vein up, almost 70, make that 75 gold on this. Oh, there comes the Nocturne Alt coming down. She's able to flash away and get out of there. The Fear lands. She tries to roll away. The Fear comes through, and that's going to be Nocturne getting the kill onto the Vein, and that shutdown gold will go over to him now. She's off the map for 35 seconds, and that's a lot of time for the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage to do what they need to do. There's the Alawi Alt coming down. Noct uh, Tom Kench able to just barely scoot away out of there. He gets slowed. No follow-up from the Alawi, though. Mundo's in the area. No topside turret for Alawi to back on. She's going to try and trade over a kill. She's going to get eaten. She's going to get spit out. She's going to get popped. The Great Health will save the Tom Kench, and that's going to be Mundo locking up the kill on the Alawi. So very good play coming out of the side of MG Domed. They're doing a great job of trying to get these return kills to get these answers across the map. Otherwise, they don't have a way back in it. So very good play. Vayne opting to roam back towards the bot side. It's hard for anybody to match her. The Vayne cannot be countered right now. She has to have two to three people in the area to lock her down. So very good plays coming out of both teams here trying to play around the win conditions. Again, less than 1,000 gold separate these two teams at almost 20 minutes in. It's a very close game still. We've got the Mountain Drake spawning in a minute 30. The Baron just joining the map. No Rift Hero going over to anybody this game. There is too much going on for them to be bothered with that. So we will not see that influence the game right now. Um, but we've got three members of the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage on the bot side making for a pick, potentially. Galio all up. Nocturne all up. They could easily turn a fight in their favor very quickly, so let's see what they opt to do here. It looks like they may be looking for a kill. Nocturne Alt comes through. Going to go for Lulu again. This will be the fourth time she's been targeted. Polymorph comes down. Caitlyn now, uh, Vayne now, finally putting out some damage. She's going to be able to get the uh, shutdown onto the Nocturne. Teleport's coming through for each side of the teams. Uh, Tom Kench falling up. Vayne able to get her second kill now, walking down the Galio. Vayne plucking away at this Alawi. She's barely alive, but it doesn't matter. She's not scared. Oh, she should have been, though. As she falls to the Alawi, she almost got a triple kill there. The Vayne is online all the way. Her Phantom Dancer coming through now, as she is going to be coming back onto the map here in about 30 seconds. The Caitlyn Alt does land on the Alawi. They're not able to lock it up. The Red Team's turret falls on the bot side, which means all Tier 1 turrets are down. And I apologize. The Rift Herald was secured on the side of MG Domed, and they dropped it topside. They're getting some pressure there. It gets a charge off onto the top, and it will fall, but it will get a charge off onto that topside Tier 2 turret. With the Mountain Drake spawning, MG Domed looking to gawk up their sole point here, and they're going to get it working. There's the Empowered Shield. There's the Nocturne. Comes down. Damage going through. Mundo is able to smite it. Mundo is able to lock up the soul point for the side of MG Domed. They do uh, trade over two kills for it, though, as the um, Lulu and the Mundo both fall. Lulu now setting at 0 and 5. She is seeing a lot of gray screen. Pink's coming out left and right from the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage. As they know they've got a double man advantage on the map, they're going to go ahead and try and lock up this Baron, potentially. Vayne roaming around looking for a flank, going to get caught out on Vision. She can't go in solo here. There's too much damage even for her. She's got her Rage Blade, though. She's got her Phantom Dancer, and she's got her Kraken Slayer. With Berserker Graves, she can melt down almost anybody on that team. They're doing too good a job on the Baron, though. They're not going to be able to lock it up. That's going to be the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage, securing the first Baron of the game at just 22 minutes. 
and 40 seconds. Baron barely even got a chance to get onto the map before it was taken off. Very good at play um, to use that advantage. That is uh, sole point on the side of MG Domed, though. So we've got a very back-and-forth game, less than 200 gold separating these two teams right now. Um, a hell of a game so far. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you're in the chats or in the comments. Let me know who you think is going to win um, based on what you're seeing right now. It's hard for me to say since last, te uh, last game both teams did really well, and this game's pretty even. I'm too afraid to call it at this point because they both have a win condition. The Nocturne Galio Alt, though, has been doing hella work. On this bot side duo. That poor Lulu has been killed five times by that Nocturne, I believe. Or at least with the presence of the Nocturne. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what they do to try and answer here. And the Mundo takes a phone call, throws it on over to Nocturne, gets a little damage there. Both teams vying around in the bot lane. No objectives on the map for another three minutes. Red team, I want to see them be able to utilize the Baron here. Kosa Gaming Rampage needs to knock down some turrets, needs to get some objectives and not just waste team fights. If they throw their Baron buff here, it'll be worth nothing. Tom Kemp's the only one not in the area. Teleport not available, so we're going to have to see what he decides to do here. If he's going to go ahead and opt for that Tier 2 topside turret and potentially leave them to a 4v5 down on the bot side. Good pick from the Lowey there. They're going to blow up that Mundo soul, and he's going to get slowed down and whacked here. Now you've got the Karma E empowering them for the charge. Baron minions are in the area, and they are going to go ahead and put some pressure here. There's the Tom Kench. He's going for it. Teleport. Oh! Nocturne Alt comes down, lands the fear onto the Caitlyn, but is not able to secure it. The Galio Alt comes down. Nocturne, in the meantime, is blown up. Galio finds himself outnumbered here, using his own. He's just to stay alive. It's a 4v5. I'm sorry, it's a 2v4 now, as this Vayne is online. She locks down the Karma. The poor Kog'Maw getting chased down. The Caitlyn Alt comes through, and that's going to be three kills going over. I'm sorry, a double kill going over to the Vayne. Now, Alawi trying to fight back against the pressure from this... Uh, from this Tom Kench, she's the only one with the Baron buff now. They were able to lock up that mid-tier 1 turret, but the mid-tier 2 turret's going to fall. The tier 2 turret top's going to fall, and it's going to be the side of MG Dome that's able to really answer back and get this uh, get this game rocking for them. And so the Baron play will only net the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage one turret. As they die in a team fight, all but Alawi, who now is the sole person with the Baron buff, it'll be falling off her shortly, if not already. And that will put the side of MG Domed in a very favorable position as they lock up two more turrets off of that play. They now have a 4,000 gold lead at this point and a lot of pressure. Very well played from the side of MG Domed. Drake spawn in 52 seconds. If the side of MG Domed is able to lock it up, that's going to be the Mountain Soul going over to them. If not, the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage is going to go ahead and draw this game out a little bit longer. And we're going to see another fight likely brewing here again. The ult on the Nocturne is up. The no ult on the Galio, not quite, so they don't have the combo to land there. But you've got a Lowey with her ult as well, which can be a huge difference in this team fall. It's a 5v5. Mundo putting the pressure on. Tom Kench going in heavy, taking some damage. He's able to eat up the Karma. He's going to spit her back out. The Nocturne ult comes down through. And it's going to be the Alawi getting melted down by the Vayne. The That is a double kill going over to the side of, I'm sorry, rather a triple they are able to get a three-for-one trade in favor of MG Domed. They win that fight very well as the Vayne is fully online and operational. And they are going to go ahead and lock down the Mountain Soul. MG Domed playing a very good game here right now. They were able to win that team fight. The Vayne is shredding through people. You've got the Kench. You've got the Mundo both able to play some frontline and the Lulu to empower both of them. So they find themselves in very favorable positions when it comes into these team fights in order of winning them. The Nocturne Galio alt is great for skirmishes, but if you've just got a team fight going down and the Vayne is able to burn down on the Lowey, the Tom Kench, the Karma, you don't find yourself in a very good position to be able to fight that back. There's the ca there's the ca um, Kench in the area. It's a 4v2 right now. Nocturne Alt comes down. He's going to go in on the vein. 
The Galley Walt coming through now. It's not going to get a knockup on anybody besides the Lulu. Vayne is starting to do a hell of a lot of damage now. She's got her Bork as well. That's going to be the Vayne locking down the Galio. She's going to continue to pluck away. The uh, Polymorph comes through, and that's going to be the Allowee now going over to the Caitlyn. So, Karma going to get a uh, chance to try and fall here. No, it's going to be Caitlyn, I mean Vayne, who was able to get a triple kill there, and will lock up the kill on the Kogma. She's chasing down the Karma, and she gets a quadra kill. A team ace in favor of MG Dome, and Costa Gaming Rampage are going to find themselves losing that fight as well. Baron Buff be damned is what Kosa is, uh, what MG Dome is going to say. They're going to put pressure on it. They don't have a weight, but they're going to go ahead and knock down this turret and get the inhib on the top side as well. Running around trying to decide what they want to do. The Vayne going to take some turret shots as she's just roaming around. Baron is up and they don't have another member from that enemy team for another five seconds or so. Uh, they're going to try and take this Baron, I bet you, or at least clear out the rest of the jungle. They are sitting on a pretty penny of gold. This Vayne is sitting on another full item. The Caitlyn sitting on some components. So I would imagine that they want to get some backs off here, but they may just want to go ahead and melt down the Baron and then take the reset. Baron Nash are going over the side of MG Domed. They are going to go ahead and take the resets and look at that Vayne. She is 29 minutes into the game and full build. She has absolutely no fear of anybody on that team. She can melt down the tankiest of the tanks. She can blow up the squishiest of the squishies. And she's got two beautiful frontline members in the form of Tom and Mundo to go ahead and walk up front for her. And she's got a Caitlyn behind her to go ahead and do some additional damage. Um, the superstar of this game very clearly took it personally. That's his name, not how he feels. And they're going to go ahead and march on. They're going to put some pressure on this mid turret. Clench, not afraid to walk under the turret, take some shots. He's not afraid at all. Meanwhile, the Mundo is locking up Scuttle. Well played from the Mundo. It looks like he's going to go ahead and back here. He's sitting on a pretty penny. He gives himself a little bit of something. But we've got a really good skirmish going on here in the mid lane at that base turret for the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage. They cannot let this inhib fall. They've got Baron-empowered minions. They're doing a great job of trying to push back, but they've got to be able to try and clear this wave somehow. They're not going to be able to do it. The turret's going to fall. Inhib getting worked on now. It's likely going to fall here as well. The side of MG Dome putting the pressure on. Kinch not afraid to step up. He is a fearless tanky boy. And it is going to be the side of MG Dome maybe looking to end here as they have a wave crashing. It's still 5v5 on the map, all members here in the red base, and they are looking for a fight. This empowered cannon and just doing damage to that last um, Nexus turret, or the Nexus turrets. Um, we got a fight coming down. Tom Kinch continuing to just take damage after damage here, but he's able to just heal up throughout the whole thing. No fear. Galio trying to go in, make a play. They're going to try and use the Nocturne ult. It comes down. He's able to get... Uh, Tom Kinch is able to eat the carries, though. And that will be nothing coming from it. The fear comes down onto the uh, the Vayne, and she will fall. Vayne gets killed by the Alawi with the help of the Nocturne now. They find themselves on the back foot. A lot of health expended there. They're all relatively low, and they're going to try and get away. The Caitlyn able to back towards the top side. The Empowered uh, back allows her to get away. They're trying to stop the kills from coming in, but that's going to be Mundo potentially falling here. He's barely able to walk away with his life, and they are only going to trade over one kill there. Very well played from the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage to turn that fight around in their favor. The Baron was not in their favor. The fight was certainly not going their way, but it looks like the side of MG Domed had overextended and we were just staying a little bit too long. Because they stayed too long, they took a little bit too much poke in the skirmishes, and then when the fight turned around, they were not able to sustain. Now, Tom Kinch taking some more damage from the Kogma. The ult coming through. Not going to land, and he's able to get away. 
We see super minions crashing into the top wave. They're going to have to find some answer for that. The Drake is going to be spawning here in 30 seconds, and Elder could be the next prio that they see these teams fighting over. I don't know how they're going to do it with super minions crashing into the top, crashing into the mid. If they bring all members there, they will lose their base, as the Nexus turrets are barely standing. It looks like they've only got one in the area at this point. So we'll have to see what they decide to do here. 15 more seconds until the Elder Drake is up. Blue in position, maybe looking for a pick in the area as they clear out this red jungle. They're going in for it. Tom Kinch following through. All comes out. Nocturne going on. The fear doesn't land. Nocturne getting blown up. He's going to fall over to the Moondale very likely here as they'll follow through. And yes, he will fall to the Tom Kinch. Now we've got a Lowey getting chunked down by the vein. That's two kill trade in favor of MC, MG Dome. Now the zone is popped on to the Galio. He's going to fall. Um, we've got the Tom Kinch falling. We've got the Karma falling. We've got a huge fight going over, and that's going to be a triple kill in favor of the Vayne. They don't even need the Elder Drake. It's going to be the side of MG Dome marching on to glory as they get their second game of the series locked up. My game froze, but I promise you they won it. That's two games over in favor of MG Dome. Stay here for game three as we get loaded in. Thank you very much for watching. Everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. We are getting ready to start game three of the series between MG Domed and Kosa Gaming Rampage. If you have not done it yet, hit the follow button. I'd love to have your support. I host games almost every night of the week, sometimes more than one. Um, if you cannot catch me here, look at my schedule. You can see whose Twitch I'll be on casting games. I work for Team Ambition, the Hextech Championship, Viper uh, Esports, and a couple other orgs. So check me out down there. I'd love to have your support. But we're going to go ahead and get into this game three right now the first band going to come through from the side of Kosa gaming rampage and they're going to band out the akali
and we are going to see the Jinx also banned again. This has been to be the third game we will see Jinx and Ally banned. So a lot of respect going there. They don't want to see the Akali. They don't want to see the Tom. And they do not want to see the Evelyn again. I don't blame them. That sounds like a not fun trio to go against. Zig is going to be the final band coming out of the side of MG Domed as we get into the picks. B1 going to be Mundo again. A lot of priority on the Mundo. Don't get me wrong. I like it. But uh, I've never seen Mundo picked first three times in a row like that. So uh, maybe they know something I don't. Wink, wink. Uh, very excited to see how the rest of the draft comes out, though, as we get this game going underway. Kimbo loves you. Very good call out. The vein mid was quite OP. Mundo meta. Uh, Mundo is meta. I just, uh, this is the first, I've cast games almost every single night, and this is one of the first series I've seen him picked three times right now, so he's super strong. A lot of respect needs to be given to him. Caitlin going to get picked, and the vein is getting hovered. Are they going to do the same thing? Nautilus going to go ahead and get locked in here, just teasing a little bit with the Vane hover there. Um, Vane popped off last game, just melting through people left and right. Um, easily, my vote for MVP took it personally, played his mind off there, or her mind. It's 2021, um, or her mind, um, but took it personally, played really, really well there. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Vane pick again, but they might want to swap it up a little bit. This is just a scrim after all, and you want to get some uh, some different stuff in. We're going to see Ash locked in for the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage as their ADC. And Set will be locked in. Set really strong right now. He's hovered at least. He's not going to get locked in. Set is really strong right now. I've seen him as support. I've seen his top lane. Um, but we're going to get to see the Leo instead. I love Leona. She offers peel. She offers engage. Paired really well with the uh, with the Ash. The ults drop down together. And so you've got a lot of CC chain coming out of that bot side duo um, for in lane fights and also for team fights. So really like the bot lane duo coming out of Kosa Gaming Ram uh, Rampage. Little Kane hover for us, and Kane's going to get locked in. Okay. If you're in the game watching right now, let me know in the comments. Do you think we're going to get to see a red Kane or a blue Kane here? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as these final bands come through for the side of MG Domed and Cosa Gaming Rampage. The Aurelia hovered. And taken out of the match. The Kled taken out. He uh, he was in the first game, so we'll see him removed. The final band coming from the side of MG Domed is going to be Victor. What's your Victor, Victor? He is removed from this map and the gangplank covered and banned as well. The red four pick coming up right now. Looks like they are just picking for the solo laners here. And it looks like the side of Costa Gaming Rampage is going to be doing the same thing. So let's see what they decide to leave up as the ultimate counter pick if it'll be top or mid. They're hovering the Wukong. They're going to lock that in, so it looks like they're going to put the uh, priority on countering for the mid laner here. We'll have to see what the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage decide to do here. Oriana. Ooh, I love Oriana. Oriana, team fight, huge. In presence poke, great. 
Um, I love the Oriana pick here. I want to see what the answer from the side of MG Dome is going to be into the Ori. Um, I might have picked her a second, though, just so you have less time to think about it and just kind of done an insta lock there. Who knows? And that's the Aatrox. A Aatrox going to come in from the side of Costa Gaming Rampage as their final pick for the top lane. And this last pick for MG Doomed will be for the mid lane. Uh, domed will be for the mid lane. So we will have to see what they are thinking of playing in that Oriana. I love Cassiopeia. Great pick. Cassiopeia absolutely melts through people in the fights. She is huge with her alt in the team fight. Great response to the Oriana. I love seeing it. So, everybody, if you're tuning in, let me know who do you think is going to win this game. We've got Costa Gaming Rampage with the Dr. Mundo in the jungle, Ashley Obot, Oriana, and Aatrox in the solo lanes versus the Caitlyn Nautilus bot, Kane Jungle and Wu Kang and Cassiopeia in the solo lanes. I think we're going to have a very fun match for game three here. Keep in mind, Coast uh, Gaming Rampage still down two at this point, so they could use a win here just to put themselves in a position. Um, just to put themselves in a better position. But either way, I'm excited for this game. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is the last time I'll say this, but if you haven't done it yet, hit the follow button as we go ahead and get into this third game. I'd love to have you here more nights of the week as I host games or cast for other organizations. I'd love to have your support. Either way, though, um, thank you very much for tuning in, and we will get this third and final game started here shortly.
All right, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in. We're going to get this final game of the series between MG Domed and Costa Gaming Rampage started. Let's take a look at the summer spells. We've got Ignite going on to the Wukong, teleport to the rest of the solo laners, Ignite on both of our supports. And uh, everything else looks pretty standard here, so nothing too crazy as we get loaded into the game. All right, and looks like both junglers are going to be opting for the challenging smite here. Everything else looks pretty good, and both teams are going to go ahead and five point out across the map as we get this final game started in the series. Jen Abuser, I uh, I have no idea what you said, but thank you very much for uh, commenting. MC! MC domed! Thank you so much. I am so sorry about that, Sokarch. That is my fault. MC domed. MC domed. I have been screwing that up. I have another team, MG Infusion and stuff like that, that I cast for sometimes. So that's my fault. Thank you for the call out. I'm an idiot. And yeah, that's what's up. And as the uh, buffs come on to the rift, we're going to see both teams going ahead and giving them a leash. The bot side is where the cane will start. Top side is where the Mundo will start on blue. We've got Kosa Gaming Rampage on the side of blue. MC Domed on the side of red. And this final game is going to get started. Took it personally. Was huge influence in the last game. Um, and so one want to see what he can do on this Cassiopeia. But we've got everybody starting out. Nothing too crazy going on right now as we get into the game. A little bit of poke coming down onto the Cassiopeia there, but nothing too crazy. Both the top laners just kind of farming it out. The Wukong find themselves up just a little bit. He's going to trade out onto the Aatrox, not too afraid. But the Aatrox is going to trade it right back onto him. And both of these top side lanes going with the Conqueror so they can sustain through some fights here. And I love that Nautilus skin. He just looks so cool. Like something from Warhammer, maybe. And Caitlyn doing a great job of CSing right now with about a wave into the uh, Ash. She's going to go ahead and catch some of it here. Mundo in the area tries to get a little bit of a gank off, but at least going to back up some of that pressure so they can try and maybe freeze it where they want. And this Wukong continuing to just abuse his position is just pushing this wave in very heavily. He's trading onto the uh, Aatrox, and he's just not afraid. He's up a level onto the Aatrox right now, and he's doing what he needs to do. And Costa Gaming Rampage is going to go ahead and get that bot side scuttled. The top side scuttle is going to go over to the side of MC Domed. Okay, and looking to see if he can do some counter jungling, but he's going to see everything gone right now. Um, they have great vision on that top side, though, and he may be coming in for a gank on the Aatrox as he rounds up around that uh, top side tribush. There he goes. He's going to come in. The slow lands. However, the Aatrox turns it right back around. Nothing comes out of it except for a little bit of damage onto both the Aatrox and the Cane, and they'll both kind of just shake hands and walk away. And there's the Q coming out from the Nautilus. The heel comes down. 
And the Ignite goes on to the Leo. This could be the first blood. Yes, it's going to be Novice that gets first blood on to the Leona. And so first blood happening probably the latest in the series so far at around 4 minutes and 45 seconds. Everything's happened around three to four minutes in this game so far, so you got to watch out for that Mundo in the area coming down. Maybe wanting to make a play here onto the uh, onto the Ash. The Ash is, uh, I'm sorry, wanting to make a play with the Ash as they're looking to trade over onto the Nautilus. Mountain Drake going to be the first Drake we will see spawn on the map, so we will not get a Mountain Soul this game as we did the other two games. <clears throat> Quite honestly, though, I'd love to see maybe an Ocean Soul. I think that it's a great soul, and I think the map is really fun. Is the more bushes you have, the more chance you have to pop out and just blow somebody up. And uh, Leona doing a great job of tanking that wave so that the Ash can go ahead and pick up that CS. Teleport used from Cassiopeia to get back to land. She gets a level up off it, and she's the first person to hit level 6. Second person to hit level 6 on the map as the Oriana is already there. And yeah, this uh, this Aatrox doing a pretty good job. He's only down about 3 CS from the lead that the Wukong had earlier. And do a 5 minute quick check in on the map. About 100 gold over to Wukong. About 300 gold over to the Kane. That's the Q Nautilus, la uh, Nautilus Q landing onto the uh, Oriana, but Mundo's in the area. We've got a fight breaking down on the top side. This could be Aatrox getting uh, sol uh, Solo dying over to the side of Wukong. Yes, the Ignite will tick him over just the last tick getting the kill there. Um, the gank in mid did not work as they were not able to lock down the Oriana. And Mundo showed up to lend a little bit of support to the uh, to the side of Oriana. So nothing much will come of that, but that is a solo kill going over to the Wukong in the top lane. As I was saying, we've got everything relatively equal in the bot lane, everything relatively equal in the mid lane. This uh, Kane does find himself up quite a few camps at the point that he is up about three, four hundred gold, and the Wukong now with about a five to six hundred gold lead over the uh, the Aatrox, and of course we've got Nautilus who's setting at almost three hundred gold more from that first blood kill. And this Mountain Soul is getting worked on by the side of Costa Gaming Rampage. They're going to go ahead and work it down. Mundo not quite to the 900 smite yet, but he is able to lock it up. And the first Drake will go over to the side of Costa Gaming Rampage. The next Drake is going to be Ocean, so we'll see a Cloud or an Infernal Soul, which would be really fun. And Cassiopeia not afraid to hunt down the, uh, the Oriana there. She's starting to establish her dominance. She's up in CS poking her out. And so we've got... A lot going on here in this game so far. Gold difference a little over a thousand in favor of M MC Domed. And I want to be clear, the entire time I've said MG Domed, I meant MC Domed. I was corrected on that and I apologize. MC Domed. I can say it a thousand more times to try and make up for all the ones that I said last time. So I will say their name over and over again. And again, the top side just kind of doing some back and forth trading, farming it out relatively equal. Um, Wukong is up a kill, but he does not like his position. Leona on the realm heading top side. Left her ash, dropping some vision on the uh, Herald pit, it looks like. No, she's just trying to stay out of the way, and they're going to try and lock up this Wukong. She does get spotted out. The... E lands, but nothing else will come of it. Right now, we've got the Ash getting dove on the bot side. The Ignite comes down. She's trying to trade the kill. She is able to trade the kill over onto the Nautilus. Nautilus gets the kill onto the Ash. Another turret shot coming down onto the Caitlyn. Mundo following up, and he'll lock up the kill. That's a two-for-one trade in favor of Kosa Gaming Rampage, as they are able to turn that fight around in their favor and make it work for them. The Leona going topside didn't work out in their favor, but that's okay. They were still able to make some things happen. Leona hunting around here for a second kill. There's the Kane. There's the Cass. 
There's the Aatrox. We could have a fight breaking out here by Rift Herald, but it looks like nothing's going to come of it at this point. I love how equal the mid is right now. Very even keeled, if you will, across the across the way. And we will have to pay attention to what this cane does if he decides to go red or blue. There's the E landing on the Nautilus. He's able to hook and get away, though, and nothing will come of it. Drake isn't spawning for another two minutes. They've already got the scuttle. I wonder what they has got them in that bot area just fighting around right now. Now we've got Ash, Leo, Caitlyn, Nautilus back in the bot lane going ahead and doing their thing. Caitlyn is up about 15 CS. The Ash is up a kill. Leona a bit out of position here. The alt comes down from Leona, trying to slow everybody else down, but she's going to take a lot of damage there, and she will fall to the cane as they will lock up a kill onto Leona for the side of MC Domed. And with that Ocean Drake spawning here in about one minute, I imagine that we are going to see uh, the team starting to fight for position. The Ignite comes down. There's some more damage going on to the Aatrox. The alt comes through, and it is... Wukong, who was able to lock up that kill, he was taken down to a sliver of health, thought the Aatrox might be able to lock it up, but it is going to be the Wukong who gets another solo kill onto the Aatrox. Well, we've got Mundo in the area. He's hunting for the Wukong. Wukong trying to get away, but he's on the wrong side of the map. He's not able to quite get away. He's going to try and use his clone. There goes the passive. There goes some damage. The Wukong not able to get away, and he will... Oh, fall to the Mundo. It's going to be a one-for-one -one trade in the top lane, and the Wukong is going to find himself about 20 seconds late to the party um, from the Aatrox. Very good play from the Mundo. Again, Mundo reading the game and playing where he needs to be. Um, still down several camps, though. He's up two kills, however. So take what you can get. Well, the flash coming out of the Mundo there is he finds himself out of position. The Kane and the Cassiopeia both going in on him there. Kane putting some damage. Jesus is all trying to burst him down, and he's going to lock up the kill. Kane will get the kill. That's going to be Kane getting away from the Aatrox, and nothing more will come of it. That is going to be three kills in favor of MC Domed, as they are having a 3,000 gold lead at this point. Ocean is up, so I want to see which team is going to jock for position here and try and get that into their favor. Aatrox training again into this Wukong. Um, no fear of where the Wukong sets. He's completed his Divine Sunder, but they are still uh, fighting it out. He is just sitting on the Iron Spike, not able to get too much from it. He hasn't completed his Core Drink or anything yet. Or his Iron Whip, rather. There's the ult coming down from the Aatrox, trying to stop the dive. He's following up. He's putting some damage down. He's not in turret shot, and he has to flash away just to stay alive. The teleport coming through from the Cassiopeia now. Going to try and lock it up. And she will get the kill onto the Aatrox. That's some gold going in her pocket now, too. Very good play from the side of MC Domed to play around their wing condition. Ooh, the Oriana alt misses. The Ash alt misses. The Leona alt misses. Three alts expelled there for the Ocean Drake. It's probably worth it in the end, but you hate to see those all miss. And we're going to get a Cloud Drake uh, as the soul here which means we'll get some movement speed, some cooldown on those alts, so we'll be able to see a lot of stuff happening out of these teams in the fights.
And at 15 minutes in, let's do a quick state check-in. We have got Wukong up by almost 1,400 gold. We've got the cane up by a little over 1,000. We've got about a 600 gold lead on the Cassiopeia. We've got 1,000 gold on the Caitlin, And we've even got a 900 gold lead on the Nautilus. The side of MC Dome is doing a great job right now as they have gold leads across every roll. They're up. About 5,000 gold, four kills, but they find themselves down two drakes at this point. First turret has gone over to Wukong as well, which is where a lot of that gold lead is coming from, along with the two kills that he has gotten in the assist for when Cassiopeia teleported up last. With Rift Herald on, we're going to have to see what these teams decide to do. Yeah. Nico Neek, what up? Welcome to the show, baby. This is the third game in the series, MC Domed. The red team has won the last two games, and they're doing pretty good this game. Uh, we've got Aatrox having to run away here from the Cassiopeia. The flash comes through. The alt comes down. She's going to chase it. She'll get the kill. Is she going to die? No, she's able to lie. She's able to live there. She takes a turret shot, but she does not die, and she's able to lock up that kill on the Aatrox. Very well played from Took It Personally. Now we've got the Nautilus out of position, getting some damage here. He has to flash away, but he flashes over to the Nautilus. I mean, over to the Leona. Mundo's in the area. They're going to be chasing down. And yes, that's going to be the Nautilus. He's trying to get away, but he is going to just have too much peel and too much CC coming out of the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage, and they will lock up the kill on the Nautilus. It's a trade in the bot side there. Answering back a little bit, um, but yes, the side of MC Dome is doing a very good job of controlling this game right now. Some damage going on to the Cassiopeia here. She finds herself a little over half health in this fight with the Orianna. The Orianna ult is up. It'll land. Some damage comes down. Not able to lock up the kill yet. She's barely dead. She's barely she's barely alive, and she's going to get away. With the Cloud Drake, that gives her a little bit of movement speed, and she is not going to die. Orianna and Mundo, both in the area, not able to lock up the kill. And so that will be just a couple of alts wasted there. Very well played from the Cassiopeia to stay alive there. Took it personally is probably my MVP for the series, if we're being honest. Here comes the Rift Herald. It's going down. They're going to use it to try and break open the base at less than 20 minutes. It goes down. Kane is going to go ahead and almost going to kill onto the Aatrox. Definitely going to charge off onto that base turret. And now we've got Orianna trying to chase him down. But we've got Wukong in the area who is not to be trifled with. He has the Executioner's Calling. He has the Divine Sunder. And he is in a position that he can probably 2v1 some folks in this game. Orianna definitely being one of them. So I, I don't know exactly what we're going to get to see here. Now Mundo trying to land it. He is very mobile. The, uh, Wukong getting away, trying to fight for his life. He's going to try and nope, he's going to fall there and he will die to the Orianna. Now Nautilus out of position here. This is Kosa Gaming Rampage trading over two more kills to their side. And they are going to find themselves answering back a little bit, keeping the gold lead at just under a 5,000 gold lead. Blue side able to get, uh, a blue side losing another turret. Oh, wow. Is the, mm, you hate to see it if you're the Mundo. The Cassiopeia's poison damage just ticking down that Mundo. Uses the R to try and lock some of them up, but she will fall to the Aatrox. And the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage really finding their way back into this game. They are trying to get picks and kills wherever they can. They're using two-man advantage in the fights. They're looking for overextensions from the Wukong kill. They are doing what they can to put it in their favor. But unfortunately, they are not able to um, really get much out of it at this point. We're about 20 minutes in, and they're still down 5K, two drakes, and three, uh, three turrets. We're not going to be able to see another rift on the map, but it will just be the Baron. The Drake is going to be spawning here in about 10 seconds, and so we are probably going to see another team fight breaking out here in just a moment. And so here is the side of Kosa Gaming Rampage locking up their third Drake of the game, putting themselves on Cloud Soul. That being said, what will they sacrifice for it as Caitlyn is pushing in the mid and Wukong and Kane pushing in the bot? 
There's the ash hole. It misses. It does not land on the Caitlyn. She might have an out here. She's going to run into Leona. She has to try and get out of there. The E lands. Locks him up. Kane's in the area. Deciding if he wants to go in. He's going to go onto the ash. He's trying to put some damage down. Caitlyn gets blown up. Not able to lock down the ash there. Now he's face focusing over on the Oriana. Wukong in the area. Going to try and join the fight here. But we've also got Aatrox and Oriana. Alt comes down from the Kane. He's trying to get away and dancing around. But that's going to be two kills. Traded over to the side of... Kosa Gaming Rampage as they are slowly tying up the game in kills and getting some objectives back for themselves. It's still about a 5k gold lead for the side of MC Domed, but Kosa Gaming Rampage, great job of exploiting the overpositioning from the side of MC Domed to get themselves some more kills. The side of MC Domed, Caitlyn was alone. Kane was not there to follow up, took a little too long to respond to help get the kill onto the Ash, and Wukong went back in when he should have tried to lock up the kill on the Caitlyn and got out of there. So, really good plays from the side of Costa Gaming Rampage this game, trying to answer back some of the gold, uh, some of the gold loss that they find themselves with. And forgive me, it is 9.30 my time. I'm going to mute myself briefly while I take a bite of sandwich. I'll come and talk if something else happens. Leona hunting down the alt, uh, the Nautilus, he has to flash the good away. And this Nautilus is just barely getting away with his life. Um, we've got a lot of pressure coming out of the side of Kosa Gaming, uh, Rampage here. We've got a fight breaking out. Mundo taking a lot of damage. Found himself out of position. Will fall. Nautilus falling over. It's a one for one trade so far. We've got another team fight breaking out here. And that's going to be Cassiopeia locking up the Leona and the Ash. Caitlyn going to try and lock that up. Her alt will get the kill. And that is a four for one trade in favor of MC Don't. Are they able to get the penny here? Kane may want to follow up. He's going to go charging through. No, he's not. So that is a. Uh, that is a four for one trade in favor of MC Dome. If, in the meantime, Coast of Gaming Rampage had been doing a really good job of trying to claw their way back in the game. MC Dome, I messed it up, apparently. That's my fault. I thought somebody just said it MC Dome. It's MG! I've been saying MG domed mg domed is correct listen you guys are incredible mg domed is that correct mg domed mick no you're not mick get out of here you guys you guys are messing with me now yeah i had been saying mg for the first two games and then i thought you said switch that makes it much easier. Malicious Gaming Domed. Thank you so much, Sokarch. I appreciate you. Pretend I'm an idiot and then move forward with that assumption. We've got a fight breaking out here. It is going to be the side of MG Domed that locks up a kill onto the Ash. You guys got me all twisted right now. And that's going to be the blue team turret falling near uh, top side base turret. Wukong going heavy on this team with some support of the Leona and the Cassiopeia in the area. That is going to be the Oriana that falls now. They are going to get another turret, the Tier 2 turret in mid falls. They're putting some pressure here. The Cassiopeia not afraid to be putting out a hell of a lot of damage onto that Leona. They are now marching on. They could find themselves with a win here. Nexus turret taking some damage. The Kane going in onto the, uh, onto the Aatrox. Baron in the area. Baron buff on them. They're going to see the Oriana fall. Now we've got the Aatrox falling. We can see a lot of pressure going on to this last side of the... Yep, it's going to be the side of MG Domed. Malicious Gaming Domed will win their third game of the series.
And my game for us again is day one. It just doesn't like to show that victory for him. Either way, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. I want to do a post-game review of this last game here. That was a very dominant game coming out of MG Domed. Again, Malicious Gaming Domed. Um, Cosa Gaming Rampage and Malicious Gaming Dome, thank you very much for allowing me to stream your games tonight. I appreciate it so much. If you guys would like to have me, uh, if anybody would like to have me stream one of their games, please feel free to ask me. I am more than happy to do so. If you like this content, as I do it all the time, I cast games all night long, so you can hit the follow button to follow me here. Either way, let's take a quick check-in of the post game. I will hit that link. Thank you, Sokarch. A lot of gold on the side of uh, M MG Dome there. The D Aatrox damage was fierce, but that Wukong and that um, Cassiopeia just able to do so much. That top half of the side of MG Domed did an incredible job of just working their way through. Um, so much damage there. Really good game of the series. All three wins going over the side of MG Domed. Again, I can't say it enough malicious gaming domed since I screwed it up that third game. Um, Coastal Gaming Rampage, MG, MG Domed, thank you very much for letting me cast the games. Hit the follow button and thank you for tuning in. Everybody have a, excuse me, a very good night. Try your luck and take a chance.